So my question to you is, if you do interior photography at all, or long exposure work, how are you doing it? And today I want to tell you how I do it, and maybe it'll make a little more sense to you. Now, first things first, you need your tripod, all right? There's no other way around it. Yes, you can hand hold at 3000 ISO and click take a picture, but two things happens when you do that. First of all, if you are breathing, if you're breathing, you're moving, okay? Even as fast of a shutter speed as you may think you wanna go, that's faster than your actual heartbeat, we, we still have movement. I like to do long exposure work at a very small eye, meaning F16, F22 at a low ISO because it keeps the grain way down, okay? It keeps a very clean, clean file. Let me jump to the computer, I'm gonna keep talking, but uh, I wanna show you a couple of things that I have been doing. This job was with a BBC Destination Management Company. Basically what they are, they're like the wedding planners slash designers of the commercial world. So when a big corporation comes into town for their convention or seminar, they usually hire a DMC to basically do all the layout and work for them since they work with so many local vendors and they know who are the best of the best in town. So a lot of times these larger companies will trust a DMC, especially when that name has so many years behind it of excellent service and design. The way they handle their client, the way they deliver their product or services and their design factors are absolutely bar none. I've seen a lot of huge, huge events come in town and the people at BBC just take care of it like it's nothing. It's a lot more stress in the background, trust me on that, but what the clients see is not the stress. They only see the awesomeness. That's what we do, is awesomeness. These chairs are called ghost chairs, and they're just clear plastic, and the way that light goes through them is awesome. That's kind of why they'll use these chairs, is because they absorb the ambiance around them as far as lighting goes. So how cool is this? Let's do actual pixels. This is so neat, but I didn't want to mess up this beautiful sunset. That beautiful orange, when I saw it coming through these chairs a little bit, and there's also on this side over here to the right, the tent is over there, so there's some ambient light, a little bit spilling over, to the left, but most importantly, like all around here and all, this is all coming from the sky. Very, very cool. Why add flash or an LED light to this when you don't have to? You know, these designers, whether they're wedding planners or they're commercial planners, they both do the same thing. The way they design a room to be a certain color tone and they're creating this ambiance for the client so in my personal opinion, it's my job to capture it exactly how it is, the best that I can, and not alter it to a way that I think it should look different or better. You know, you know, you know what I'm saying? But let me explain something to you. These companies pay a lot of money for this custom design work, and they like seeing exactly what is there, and that is what I like to deliver. That's why my hashtag is simple, clean, beautiful. Don't mess with it, keep it simple, it's gonna be beautiful, trust me. The purpose of me going in and photographing the details is, is for the planners to be able to show the pieces parts of how they designed the room for future clients. So if you're a business coming in town and you're curious as far as what kind of candles, what kind of chairs, what do you mean by a sofa? What does a sofa look like? All of those items are what I photograph. So they're not gonna take one picture of the room and say, here, <laughs> You see the chair in the back? You, wait, can you see the sofa way dark in the background? No, I like to get every aspect of what was designed with the overall. And this was too cool. This is a new green theme that they were going for with the, the green space and you know the uplighting. And it, this, this was just really, really cool. This image looks so good. It looks so smooth. Let's go actual pixels. Look at this. This is redonkulous, absolutely redonkulous. I love images that come out the camera done. These were out of the camera, Capture One, 
tweak your color and your contrast, export, you're done. So this channel is not about typical gear that I want you to have. I don't care. I just want to show you how I do what I do, why I do what I do, and then use your equipment and copy. Do it. I would love to see you guys practice some long exposure work. We should make this a thing. What I want you guys to do is follow the instructions I gave you earlier as far as tripod, camera on your tripod, okay? F16, ISO 200, you show me the different exposures, meaning one second long, 30 seconds long, an eighth. Like you show me your, your time value that you're gonna expose for and you're gonna have so much fun doing this, trust me. And you don't have to go far away to make these test shots happen. You can literally go to your kitchen, turn off all the lights, just put some candles around the area. This is actually great to, to practice on. Talk about EV of light, that's candle light is EV, okay? Exposure value, like one candle light exposure value. Put a couple of candles scattered in there and do what I just showed you. You'd be surprised to see how the light will continue to glow on the wall. Maybe you'll light up the entire room. Maybe you want it really moody dark. That is the fun stuff of photography. Once you understand the long exposure stuff, I personally think the faster exposures are so much easier. Yeah. But send your images to my Twitter account, at GKPhotography1, because there's only one me. I would love to see some images that you practice with, and I'll be more than happy to help you along the way if I can. Look, this goes all the way back to the film days, even till now. It's not the camera model you're using, it's how you're using your equipment, okay? Learn your craft. And if somebody tells you Sony's better than Nikon, or Nikon's better than Canon, or Fuji is the new, wow, you just have to have this camera to produce these images, wrong. Wrong. Absolutely freaking wrong, dude. I'm so exhausted over these brand battles. It's not about the brand that makes those images amazing. You and I know past photographers that were phenomenal, and there were film photographers, medium format, sometimes 8x10 cameras, and they did not have stabilization. They didn't have a screen to look at. They were awesome because they knew what to do and how to do it and why they were doing it. Okay, I'm getting down off my soapbox now. But this channel, I want to explain to you guys how and the whys, and I want you to follow along, stay motivated, stay focused on your dreams. And on that note, I'll see you in the next video, okay? This is fun. I gotta go. I got more of these things to do.